Has there ever been true Marxism? Modern Marxists are unshakably confident that no, there hasn't, and that we should pursue it. To answer this question, we would need a clear definition of Marxism, and that can't be found even among Marxists, as they have fallen into the inevitable schisms that follow the death of the founder of any empire, as did the survivors of Alexander the Great, Mohammed, Charlemagne, and Genghis Khan, to name a few. In Karl Marx's case, he died before the empire was even built. So instead of doing like so many others and futilely offering my definition of Marxism, which is bound to be met with disagreement, let's instead work backwards from the countries that have attempted some sort of Marxist-esque society and see what it means to say that none of them were truly Marxist. If there's never been true Marxism, then it wasn't true Marxism in the USSR, or in the Ukraine, or in Belarusia, or in Mongolia, or Yugoslavia, or any of the other Marxist-inspired states that have existed. Nor was true Marxism practiced by any of the plethora of self-proclaimed Marxist political entities around the world. None of these got it right. Well, let's take a look at what happened in these states. Sources can be found in the description. Let's start with Stalin and the Soviet Union. Under Stalin, we have the purging of the Kulaks, as they were accused of using their wealth and power to oppress the proletariat by controlling the means of production. Wealthy, by the way, meant you owned a piece of land with a shack on it and a couple of goats. We have the creation of the Gulag system of hard labor and death camps peppered throughout the country. We have the Ukrainian famine, also known as Holodomor, as well as numerous massive purges. Altogether, this adds up to 20 to 60 million deaths. Now keep in mind, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who survived the Gulag and has arguably done more to document what happened under communist Russia than anyone, having devoted his life to it, and for which he received the Nobel Prize, estimated 60 million dead. But that wasn't real Marxism because Stalin was a sociopathic, power-hungry, corrupt, bank-robbing, uneducated peasant. He neither understood Marxism, nor was he actually motivated by its philosophy. He just saw an opportunity for a power grab when Lenin died. Now, had the great Lenin not died so quickly, none of these things would have ever happened. Okay, maybe that's true. So let's take a look at Lenin. Well, actually, dekulakization began under Lenin. Stalin just continued his policy. Under Lenin, we also have the Great Povoltsi Famine. Forgive me if I don't pronounce some of these terms correctly. While the Gulag system was created by Stalin, he was just following in Lenin's footsteps who had created the Savolki prison and labor camp in the White Sea as a welcoming center to all enemies of the party, which Solzhenitsyn refers to as the mother of the Gulag. And let's not forget a civil war and the murder of the Romanov family. All in all, Lenin's regime was no different from Stalin's, with some 5 million deaths on his watch. But he only had about 5 years of power, whereas Stalin had 3 decades. By the way, the famines under both Lenin and Stalin were so severe that cannibalism was commonplace, including people eating their own children. Yeah, but that's not fair. You see, you can't pin the civil war on Lenin. That's probably true. And in the chaos of the aftermath, combined with failing crops, temporarily extreme measures had to be taken. Had Lenin lived longer, he would have eventually brought the true Marxist utopia. Okay, if you say so. But then we have the Soviet Union after Stalin. While things weren't nearly as bad, we still see much of the same as before, just significantly toned down. Food was scarce, the Gulag continued for another eight years, and even after it closed, the mass imprisonment of thousands of political dissidents never stopped until the fall of the USSR. But that wasn't real Marxism either. The leaders that followed Stalin had all either lived under his regime or had been leaders themselves within his regime, so the whole country never started on the right track. Fine. Let's take a look at China then. Under Mao Zedong and his Cultural Revolution and the Great Leap Forward, we also find the country littered with labor camps known as the Lao Gai, which still exists today. We have the purging of oppressive property owners, and once again we have large-scale famines leading to cannibalism. And let's not forget the purging of those pesky Tibetans. That is to say, the exact same thing as in Russia, but worse. No, but Mao was an uneducated peasant like Stalin, who didn't understand Marxism, plus he inherited a war-torn country coming out of Chiang Kai-shek's nationalist totalitarian regime. So that wasn't real Marxism either. Okay, then let's go to the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia under Pol Pot. Once again, we find the labor camps, the purges, and the famines. So just like Russia and China, but he only killed 2 million, although it was a quarter of his population. 
That wasn't real Marxism either. Pol Pot was also an uneducated peasant. Wait, no he wasn't. He was an upper-class landowner educated in France at the Sorbonne no less, during the intellectual height of all the most famous French Marxist thinkers. He understood Marxism in and out. Then we have Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam. Also an educated man who learned about Marxism in France. Same story. But that wasn't real Marxism either, because the Americans were there screwing everything up. Okay, then there's Afghanistan. Similar story. And not real Marxism either. Then there's all the African states with Marxist regimes. Between all of them, we find much of the same outcomes. That doesn't count either though. There was all sorts of turmoil going on in Africa that had nothing to do with Marxism. Okay, fine. That's true. I'll give Marxists this one. You certainly can't blame Marxism for all the chaos in Africa. And probably any system would have failed. But Marxism didn't improve the situation. Then there's the entire Eastern Bloc in Europe. Here we go again. Have you picked up on the pattern yet? But that wasn't Marxism either for some reason. As a side note, I included Tito here because technically he was part of the Communist Bloc, but he was in many ways exceptional and seems to have been generally liked by his people, although he was perfectly capable of tyranny if he deemed it necessary. Really, he ruled more like a successful king or emperor. Now let's go to Latin America, where apart from being infested with Marxist guerrilla groups, among others, who regularly terrorize the population, we have Cuba, the place where modern university Marxist idol Che Guevara demonstrated the greatness of his political mind and his people were so desperate, they would take their chances on rafts made of trash in the hopes of beaching in the Florida Keys. And of course we have Venezuela, once the most prosperous and wealthiest country in South America, now a top candidate for hell on earth. So here we go again. How many times does this need to happen? But those don't count either because, well, no, I don't get it. Why are all these Marxists always waving Che Guevara flags and posters if he didn't get it right either? Finally, we have North Korea, easily the worst current government on earth. By now, you know what to expect. And you know it's not true Marxism either, because Kim Il-sung was trained by both Mao and Stalin's regimes, and since they didn't get it right... So fine, let's grant the Marxists their claim. None of these countries or organizations ever got real Marxism down. But they were at least aiming for real Marxism, or something similar. That means that the target for real Marxism is very hard to hit. And so even though they were aiming for it, none managed to hit this apparently almost impossible bullseye. It also means that whatever real Marxism is, when aiming for it, you better hit it dead on. Because what surrounds it is the most murderous and oppressive regimes the world has ever seen. Basically, real Marxism is sitting on top of some unstable equilibrium point. So you're doomed. Because it's not good enough to hit the bullseye, you have to maintain your state on that pinpoint. And if it gets nudged in the slightest direction, you immediately fall into the Red Terror. And it will. Because no theory ever thinks of everything or takes every eventual circumstance into account. Even the great Marx wouldn't have been able to sustain real Marxism, whatever that may be, had he been given the chance to put it into practice. There is also something very disingenuous about this argument. Do Marxists accept this argument for capitalism? See, the thing with capitalism is, even if you don't get it just right, things still work out really well. Imperfect capitalism is still the best system we've ever had. Or how about Nazism? You would actually have an easier time pulling this argument off with Nazism, since we've only had one Nazi regime. You see, Hitler didn't really understand Nazism, he wasn't supposed to be murderous or anti-Semitic, just pro-Aryan. No one for a second would buy that argument. And do Marxists tolerate this obviously flawed line of reasoning with other ideologies? So I think the solution to this dilemma is not to define Marxism, but instead to define real. Experiment always trumps theory, so I will define real in the following way. Given a theory or ideology, the real of said theory is whatever manifests as a result of numerous imperfect attempts to implement its perfect but necessarily incomplete edicts. This definition, by the way, is essentially what everyone uses when referring to other people's ideologies. Using our working definition for real, we can now say that real Marxism exhibits many if not all of the following. Totalitarian utopian regimes, personality cults, collapse of infrastructure and economy, famine, 
mass censorship and surveillance, political and ethnic cleansings, purges of the wealthy and privileged, the definition of privileged is conveniently vague and arbitrary, and hard labor camps. Oh, and murderous beyond anyone's imagination. This list is in no way exhaustive, and I'd like to stress that Marxism is not a necessary condition for obtaining any of these outcomes, just sufficient, apparently. I hope I have convinced you that, yes, we have had real Marxism, numerous times in fact, and that even if not, we shouldn't try to. Furthermore, that to argue that we haven't is disingenuous and intellectually bankrupt. I'd also like to add that if there is no consensus as to the underlying tenets of your theory, then it was poorly stated in the first place. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and support me on Patreon. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.